So, good morning everyone. We'll keep speaking about stratigraphy. So here's the Kaipnozo and Biozonation in the Aaronic series of Wales. So, for a start, just have a little introduction on Kaipnozo and as I guess some of you are not familiar with the fossil group. So, these guys are organic world microfossils and they have a wide range of shape, size and ornamentation features as you can see. So the scale bar represents 100 <coughs> microns, except for the last one, which is 200 microns. So they have spines, carina, like here, carina, little spines, and even little nets over there. And their biological affinity has been long debated, but now we kind of agree that they should be egg cases of soft budded marine metazoans, although we still don't know who were the parents' animal. But they have a short range from early Ordovician to late Devonian, which makes them useful for biostratigraphy, and they have long been used to do so. But more recently, we discovered that they should have a pelagic mode of distribution, which makes them now a good tool for paleoclimatology, as their distribution patterns should be dependent on climatic changes. So now let's have a brief overlook at the Ordovician climates. It has long been thought to be a super greenhouse stage with like only a short glaciation at the end of it in the Hernansen. But now we know that actually all the upper division um, see several um, ice ages, uh, glaciation events, represented here by the carbon isotope excursion. But more recently, we, there is new evidences such as um, oxygen isotopes that suggests that this global cooling may actually have started earlier here in the lower middle or division. So this is why we wanted to focus to this period to test this hypothesis that this um, ice age actually started earlier. And if maybe an ice cap was already present in the South Pole. So to do so, we wanted to compare two different fields, uh, near field from the supposed ice cap which is Morocco, and a more a further field, but then still in the same platform, which is Wales. So let's start with Morocco. It was situated at that time in the Gondwana continent, paleocontinent, really close to the South Pole, which is like convenient to detect uh, uh, the presence of an ice cap. So this is the middle and upper stratigraphy of the, um, of the other vision. So the green one is middle or division, and this is the upper or division. We can see this is the glacial incision from this well-known or division uh, glaciation. And this tiny bit in brownish, this is the Arenic. So as you can see, it is not well defined and described, although we see that there is some um, sedimentological lowstone uh, evidences. So we wanted to have a closer look at this uh, stratigraphy in Morocco. So here, for example, in Jebel Signet, you have a quite big incision with um, sedimentological onlap filling on it. I'll help you to see it. So in blue, this is the incision, and here you can see the onlap filling. And we took sample below and above this incision to compare the, the fauna, the Caicnozo and fauna, as this is the common tool in Morocco because there is a lack of craptolites normally used in all the vision. And the samples above and below yielded the same guys, the same Eremo Kitina brevis, <coughs> which are the eponymous um, Caicnozoans from the biozone indicating uh, early mid arenic So as uh, we have the same age under and above, we can then say that this even happened quite quickly and it, that's probable to be tectonical as it is quite quick, but it would be more like um, short um, and high frequency events such as uh, glaciation related um, low stand events, for example. And we compare another section is about 50 kilometers. So here, Jebel Signet was the picture you saw before and here in Alnif, there is um, similar features with um, these unconformities and yielding the same fauna as well, this mid-Arenic fauna. So we can say at least this is a regional event. 
So now we wanted to see if this is a glacial event. We should be able to actually trace this on the global scale. So we compare this, we went to look in, in Wales, which was situated in Avalonia at that time. So it is the same platform, it's a bit of far field from this supposed ice cap, which would be in South Pole. But the problem is that there is a lack of Cadenozoan data for the early mid Arenig in the Anglo Welsh basin, which hampers correlation with the Gondwana. So, first, we sampled um, several localities in two different regions in South Wales to establish this framework. So, the um, Carmarthen area has been sampled for the um, Upper Tremadoc and Lower Arenig, and the Whitman area has been sampled for the um, upper ironic here in three different localities. So this is how it looks like in South Wales. So it's uh, quite different from Morocco, yeah. obviously. <laughs> and now this is the result from this biostratigraphical study. So the Tremadoc assemblage from the Carmarthen area is relatively low diverse because it's like the earlier record of Cadenozoans. So they're like simple shapes and yeah, not really diverse. The lower ironic has like more complicated shapes and it's a little bit more diverse and uh, they are relatively well preserved which, which is quite useful to give names to those guys. So this is a um, summary of the Carmarthen area biostratigraphy. So you can see there is long ranging species such as here, here, and here and short ranging species here, here and there which are useful to create uh, biozones. And now let's go to the Whitland area. So here again, uh, quite diverse assemblage, well preserved as well. And um, here you can see, so this is 200 microns. So those guys are quite bigger. This is 100 microns. So it is more diverse than the Carmarthen area. And this is the uppermost ironic with the um, boundary, with the lower Lianvern. So it's, it is a bit less diverse, but still, Huge specimen. <coughs> Again, this is a sum up of the biostratigraphy of Whitland area. So we still have the same long ranging species, which were the same as the we found in the Carmarthen area. And again, short ranging species such as here and there and there, which are useful to create biozones. So now that we established this biozonation in Avalonia, we are now able to correlate those sections with the, with the Gondwana and, um, and unconformities that we saw earlier. So here is the, so this is the, the biozonation from Wales, and this is two different biozonation from Northern Gondwana, although they hold, they held the, they yield the same species, but it is not, it's not really, um, well, it's two different view <laughs> from the <coughs> biozonation in Gondwana, but still, so in the same color represents the same biozone, obviously. So here you can see in the upper Tremadoc, we can correlate this biozonation, and the upper Arenig yield a quite similar fauna in Avalonia and Gondwana. So this is the upper Tremadoc, so this is the guys from Wales that you saw before, and this is um, Kynozoans from the literature from Gondwana, which are really similar. And same in the upper Arenig, this is the, the whale's fauna, and this is the Gondwana fauna from literature. Again, similar guys. But unfortunately, the stage that interests us, you recognize these guys that we found in the Moroccan incision, the Eremokitina brevis. So here, in early mid Arenig, we have different fauna in here, and we have those guys which are quite different from the brevis. So we cannot correlate this early mid arenic So to sum up the whole stuff, we have this unconformity in Morocco, which um, have the same mid arenic fauna under and above the incision, which makes us think that this is unlikely to be like, for example, tectonical even, as it happens quite quickly. So it is potentially a glaciation-related incision. So if this is a glaciation-related incision, we should be able to trace this event globally. So to do so, we established this new biozonation for whales, which allows a quite good correlation for the upper Tremadoc <coughs> and the upper Arenig in Gondwana. 
But as I said before, unfortunately, this fauna is different in the lower mid Arenig, so where this incision in Morocco stands. So um, this has different possibilities. Like it could be related, of course, if we have a glaciation, if we are in a glaciation time, the sea level would be lower. So the connections between Gondwana and Avalonia would be like more difficult. We, we, we couldn't say, find the same fauna. But this is, could be also related f to the provincialism of the different area. So we still need to investigate sections from the mid arenig maybe in different um, like far fields from Morocco, to see if we could find other sedimentological evidences, or whether the same fauna we could correlate with the, with the Gondwana. So there is still a lot of work to do on this. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you for listening.